To this now, many South Africans believe that protesting is the only way to secure basic services in their communities. We've seen over the years some protests even becoming violent. We also recently experienced riots and looting in July. While some stole and vandalized because of poverty, others had very different reasons. All right, let's take it to ENCA's Ropiwa Madzena, who is with Ipsos South Africa director, uh, that is Marie Harris. Marie, I see you upgrade you traded me in for a newer <laughs> model in Ropua Matsen. It used to be you and I doing yes, what you guys are but doing. Tulas, now. You are sitting on a chair. <laughs> we are the youngsters, so we are standing up. <laughs> yeah, no hard too. feelings. So um, it's, it's a very <laughs> so it's a very interesting survey that's currently currently being finalised, um, and it focuses on that intro that you've just read around violence and looting. Um, and Marie, uh, before we get into that, just some analysis on uh, the voter turnout based on the weather conditions in parts of the Western Cape? It will definitely have a huge in, in influence. We have seen in the 2016 uh, local government election where it was running in the Eastern Cape, how many people couldn't get to the voting stations. And it will also be the case in, in especially in the more informal areas in the Western Cape because as one of your reporters pointed out, people are trying to keep their possessions dry at the moment. And there's talk of another rainstorm this afternoon. So um, perhaps while the weather holds for the next two hours, perhaps go out and vote now. We don't know what will happen the rest of the day in the Western Cape. But it is extremely important to the DA because the Western Cape together with Gauteng, are two, they two big strongholds. And if we want to get to the figures Tulas mentioned earlier of 20% of vote, voting for the DA, they need the Western Cape and Gauteng votes. Mm, it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. But on to this hour's theme, Marie. Uh, first, before you explain this first slide that we're about to delve into, talk us through this particular survey and the way it was conducted. Mm. We call this study Ipsos Gaibas, and it is a study conducted every six months where we look at social political issues, broader issues in the country, sometimes very focused things. We change the questionnaire a little bit to talk to things happening, like, for instance, the looting that you and I will talk about just now. Um, a total of 3,600 interviews are done all over the country. So it is representative of all areas, all types of communities, all um, population groups, all ages. And uh, we will just look at some of the overall results today. Mm. The, the study is done face-to-face uh, -face in the homes and home languages of respondents. Yeah, very interesting. So we're focusing in violence in SA. Uh, let's just go back to the first one before we move on. Um, so we're focusing in violence in SA, and one of the big things here is the fact that it's been a huge theme for this year. So when you've just explained this particular survey, talk us through these questions, uh, which I think some of them are quite startling, that mm. people are saying that violent protest is the only way to get service delivery. 40% of people agree with that, Marie. The next one, that it's acceptable, you know, to strike or protest to get service delivery. Another quite a high statistic. And, of course, um, the other one that we've just mentioned. But uh, before we talk about this particular slide that's on now, uh, talk us through those numbers that I've just shared. Well, if we look at the issue of violent protest or protest to get delivery, um, a lot of people on the ground will tell you that's the only way that they can get the attention of either the local government or the provincial government or the national government. And it is actually sad if you think about the fact that local government is the coal face of government. That is where government interacts the closest with the people it governs. But people are still finding it almost impossible to get anywhere. And... Um, well, this is a personal story, but we've been trying for 14 years to sort something out with Joburg municipality, and we are not the only people. So really, people, in the end, I'm not surprised that about four in every ten say, unless we are violent about this, unless we protest, so that the news media come and see what we are doing, government's not listening. So that, that has been a theme, a strong theme for a number of years. It is not a new thing at the moment. But then they also say that the um, government is not really doing that well. 
handling this unrest during uh, during protest and as we've seen on the slide 25 percent so called to say the government is doing that well to say no mm -hmm. it is not it is not this handling is that particular protests very well right let's focus on this particular um page now uh, marie so here we're focusing specifically on the july unrest um and of course there are different reasons that many people alluded for. In my intro, we mentioned the fact that people did it because they're hungry and yeah. they are living in poverty. But talk us through some of the other reasons that were identified. I found it quite interesting that people were sending a political message to the ANC, quite a substantial uh, agreement there by the surveyed. Yeah, um, the first one is actually the sentence is not full there, but it, it, it talks about there were people with ulterior motives that motivated people to, to go and loot and that it was a political message and that they looted because they were in Hungary because both these stories came out at the time and um, uh, there was a lot of um, people who were of the opinion at that stage that we should not, we should look at how the hunger, COVID and all those things, it is not surprising that people looted. it. But this is telling another story. This is saying, well, four in every ten or more than four in every ten, saying there were people instigating this. They were sending um, a, a political message to the ANC, but at the same time motivating to people to go out and steal. And if we look at a lot of the visuals we saw at that time, I mean, there were poor people taking things. But then the other side of it was that there were some pretty smart vehicles used in, in, in this looting. You would also remember those, those visuals. So I can totally agree with those two first statements that, that there were people motivating others and instigating them to, to go and vote and that it was a political statement made. But I think the most interesting thing about this is that only a quarter, say, of South Africans across the board are saying that they support this looting. Mm. This is, in a way, there were so many people afterwards who said, this is not the way we do things. And we even saw clean-up operations exactly. in communities. Exactly, by communities who, who, who sorted things out for themselves. And I think that, that was a very good result to get that. It was so low that the support or the percentage of support for the looting. But then 31% again say that government performs well in ending political violence. So what we are actually saying, uh, we need to look at institutions like the police, like the army, like those who, who are in the state law and security, order, yes. state security, people who, who need to keep those things close and... Uh, look at their operations and look at their mandate because clearly that's not working that well. Right, and this is a theme that we've carried throughout the morning, uh, Marie, and I think it's very important for us to keep highlighting the fact that despite the unhappiness and the violent protesting um, and all of these things, people don't have a lot of options that they can trust when it comes to who to vote for. There are parties that have never made their mark in terms of providing services. There are those that have failed. And so I find that sometimes people just don't know where to turn uh, if they're not looking for an alternative. Yes, and I think that's one of the reasons why um, we suspect there will be quite a, stay away, a big stay away vote. And something that we have spoken about earlier in, in our discussions the last two weeks is that we have 42.6 million South Africans who are eligible to vote. Of those, only 26.2 million are registered to vote. The question today is how many are going to turn out to vote? Because it has an effect on the legitimacy of our democracy. If only a third decides who the local governments will be mm. in the country after this. So only a third of about 60 million of us decide on the democratic processes of this country through exercising their votes. It's a scary figure and hopefully in times to come we might see a little bit of change. Marie, uh, obviously we are continuing our conversations and we'll be back with uh, later uh, with different data and of course the big one at the end of the day, coalitions and kind of look looking at the direction that these polls are likely to take. To us, that is it from us for now. We'll be back with more a little bit later on in the afternoon. Right.